Man, movies before breast augmentation, huh? Right? I kind of like it. It's kind of like natural. <laughs> there was no 70s bush. Could have used a big old bush. Ugh. Big old thick 70s bush. You know what I mean? 77. <laughs> Bushes have never been thicker. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to Film House. Um, <laughs> this is uh, our final spooky October Ooh. Film House uh, episode. Um, and, uh, <gasps> don't, don't. I told you. What did no, I tell you about spooky like that? I apologize. I um, apologize. Uh, last week, we talked about Killer Clowns from Outer Space. The week before, we talked about Troll 2. So we're continuing and kind of wrapping up our spooky Halloween month with another spooky, the spookiest movie I can Ooh, possibly worse. find. <laughs> yeah, right. Nightmares. And it's, it's a 1977 classic. Uh -huh. Deathbed, the bed who eats. The bed that, that eats. eats. Whatever. The bed whom, whom <laughs> eats. <laughs> this is a kind of, I guess, cult classic. Uh, like I said, it came out in 1977. It's one of those weird movies right on the line before the horror yeah. genre was fully fleshed out. Kinda, yeah. Before and movies it, had to make sense. It like went from being psychological art films to then like straight up horror mm -hmm. uh you were learning different film techniques and makeup techniques and like violent techniques and everything that's kind of where this movie falls to preface that um in terms of its cult viability at least mentioned it beforehand and i was going to bring it up but uh it's famously known as part of a Patton oswalt bit oh he did a whole stand-up like, 2007 rant, wow. rant about this movie and then he also wanted to make another movie which if you've seen deathbed the bed, the bed that eats. The bed that eats. That he wanted to do rape stove. The oh, stove yeah. who rapes. Wait, oh, no, they made that. I've seen the. Uh, I've at least seen box art for rape. Did, you, did they make it or did you dream it? That's in reference <laughs> I think to it. Patton Oswalt. Okay, bit. Yeah. I gotcha. Okay. Um, a little, a little uh, prep for this movie. Other than the back production background, this is the one and only film that this director made. Uh, George mm -hmm. Barry, I want to say his name was. The one and only film he made. Uh, it's the story of a bed. That is possessed by a demon. It eats people that sleep in it. Sometimes. It's only sometimes. Yeah. Uh, when it's a woman, it basically makes them orgasm, and then yeah. it eats them. It when strips her over. Man, it strips her over clothes. When it's a man, it just eats them straight yeah, up. Yeah. Just no questions well, of asked. Of course Down not. Quick. If it's a male demon, it's gonna make them orgasm first. The well, only other setup I'll give before you guys can jump into it and <laughs> kind of tell me your reactions is that there's also a man who was once eaten by the deathbed. who yes. was a painter. Deathbed did not kill him. It in spared fact, him. Uh, Deathbed turned him into a man stuck behind one of his own paintings on yes. the wall. Which, so, and but so, and the painting's in the same room as the bed. So yes, it's so right. Over, it's a painting of, of the bed, I believe. Yes, I think so. Yes. It's a painting of the bed. And Narcissist. Now, but that's just a kind of a device, a film device to get him to narrate all the mm -hmm. things because the bed can't have a voice. Well, I think it was. Also, this artist has like a very posh accent, mm -hmm. so I think it was because the narration doesn't amount to anything. It doesn't tell you anything about the story. It, it does, tries in the last twenty minutes or so. Yeah, it does it tries. Start in, but I think it's mostly just like to have a classy narrator over it to just kind of like class up the movie a little oh, bit, make it a little more artistic. It's a device so that way he can avoid having to actually put do these things on screen. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Ab absolutely. I mean, they should have just had a guy sitting in a chair like a Masterpiece Theater type of thing narrating the movie. Oh, yeah. The painting in the same room as the bed didn't it's super make any confusing, sense. And, and we had this playing in the room, and so sometimes my back is to it, so I had no idea yeah. what was up with that that no. disembodied voice for so long. <laughs> well, even <laughs> watching movie. it, it doesn't explain his role behind the painting no. until well, about halfway into the movie yeah. then it's, it's like so i was like is that the bed talking yeah you don't ever know you don't know who's talking it's just oh. the movie just starts with someone talking the establishing shots make it very clear when he's sitting in that cubby yeah but you don't know painting. what he yeah, is know, you don't necessarily see someone sitting behind a painting and think oh that must be the uh immortalized spirit <laughs> of the painter who is eaten by a bed why, why does the bed have those abilities to turn someone into a painting it is speculated. but only once it was speculated there's some kind of like demon that is possessing the bed, and the demon also. Well, it's the demon's tears. Yes, yes, that yeah. corrupted the bed. They did eventually unravel the full plot. Not the demon Gosh, itself. It's so bad. It's not love it's, lost. It is like all beds things that eat. It's a god everything. It is like all things when you see it's, this in movies, no especially bush. movies that didn't have two hundred million dollars. When you see these things happen in movies, you go, "Oh, this is something that someone had to come up with to make up for the fact that they couldn't make the movie that they thought that they were going to be able to make in the first yeah. place." But there are better movies that know how to do that. Oh yeah, well yes. <laughs> so. I mean, it's a skill to be able to navigate a low-budget minefield and, and everything. If I'm not confused, I know we always make the joke of like, "Oh, you dreamt this, you dreamt this," but I think the 
the writer director did dream this. It seems sort of. like it. It mm -hmm. seems more like it's, a sexual deviancy. Yeah, I, I was <laughs> reading the wiki and I, I think he may have. It's very surreal. It's very surreal in a lot of well, ways. That's the thing. This movie again, the, when it came out, was right on kind of the border of the surrealist genre of filmmaking into straight up like it's pre Nightmare Before Elm Street. Well, like you get movies like Suspiria coming out, Suspiria which are also that sort example. of thing. I just my favorite thing about this is the bed is in this really like it was a really nice house but then I guess it kind of burned down it got dismantled or whatever but people still go there all the time yeah to like make out and have sex and it, thinking about bringing a woman to a basement <laughs> dungeon yeah. covered saying, in lice let's in <laughs> let's have sex in this Victor Victorian era bed they've never been there before yeah. it's just they just go in and fuck it well, just I, seems strange I, in, Sitting on, going to this decrepit house and get sitting on blankets and beds. Does that beds. turn you on? It's no, crusty. it's disgusting. Yeah. Like even on that I see, centuries. I see a couch on the sidewalk and I'm like, Benson, get the fuck away from yeah. that. You're not well, coming home with anything. I think that's that's <laughs> part of deathbed. Is that whatever, whatever? I won't spoil the ending. Oh, but there's, a, there's an aura that it spits out. I would say, yeah, oh. and, and in the way it that makes you erog feel erogenous. Well, yeah, he also brings fried chicken. By the way, this yeah. guy's the the first <laughs> set of victims for deathbed at the opening. He brings two apples, a bottle of wine, and fried chicken. Well, yeah. I, might, I might be tempted. Hell I was yeah. gonna say, now you're getting wet. Sorry, let's go ahead. But yeah, in the, in the way that none of the none of the characters bring up the fact that it's awkward to fuck on a bed that they just found. Um, or that they're drawn to it, or the fact that, to a point, all women experience a creepy amount of sexual reverie while they're being sucked into deathbed. So it's a bed that's an aphrodisiac. Uh, sort of. Yeah. I, I likened it to, like, Dracula's uh, thrall or oh, whatever. Yeah. He can cast a glamour on somebody, right. and then they're just like, oh, and then he bites them, and it's, like, bizarrely sexual because that's creepy. That is kind of what happens to this woman at the very beginning. Happens to all women. Well, she keeps trying to fight him. Fight the guy and be like, yeah. no, no, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Yeah, and then eventually she's like, fuck it, I'll just do it. I, I, I have to say this at least, though. I know you're not crazy about uh, like debris in beds. Like we have a dog and he leaves hair behind yeah, in the bed. Well, Deathbed probably wouldn't would anyone eat the not like that. No, I'm just saying deathbed. <laughs> even though it's an old bed, probably would be able to eat all of the dog hair. So like, well, we're at work during the day. It would clean the bed. So, so deathbed may be. I mean, I just true. It makes bed. its own sheets. I have a hard time getting in the mood when there's. Dog fur and debris. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Everywhere. The deathbed may eat the debris. Like it eats that. Yeah, no, it's clean. Deathbed will just clean, self clean it. So the, actually, the worst part about the movie for me is that yes, yeah, so there's a, so you see there is an acid. Oh, yeah, there's basically the, it's, it's basically like a water bed of acid. Yeah. <laughs> that it drops the food into or the human, <laughs> and, he's such and a also prankster. spits it back up. It, the core, <laughs> by the way, of an apple is no good for deathbed. Right. Well, the deathbed is a uh, human. Savage. The deathbed. So watch it'll it'll bring down a wine bottle, drink the wine, yeah. and then spit the bottle back up. Yeah. Uh, Didn't like that year. I was, <laughs> I was actually disappointed with that mechanic. I thought Deathbed was gonna like open up and like basically like so it'd be this I. really gory, disgusting thing because it says the bed that eats. Yeah. yeah, they're gonna do that. Yeah, they're. Gonna I thought maybe we, I thought maybe we'd see a tongue snarl yeah, out. Yeah, I thought that would be something cool, something like, like some terrible I thought, effect. I thought this was kind of a cool technique, honestly, because I thought it was okay, gonna yeah. be a, yeah. like Nightmare on Elm Street does yeah. have a deathbed. Uh, where Johnny Depp is sucked in. And oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Right. And then there's so, so much blood shot out at the ceiling. But I was like, oh, this is how they're gonna do the it's deathbed. Acid. This it's is how you do a deathbed with twenty bucks. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, that's pretty good. Well, they use they just use an acid tank. It's funny because I've used acid, so I know exactly what they're doing. They they they, they have an acid tank where they put a camera on the outside of it, and they just basically did a time lapse. So they drop the food in, and then you watch the acid dissolve the food. Except it's it's there it's it's chewed though. Like the the chicken and the <laughs> apple core, it wasn't dissolved by acid. Somebody just like took bites out of it, or a stagehand like took chunks yeah. out of it to make it look like it was it eaten by a mouth. And the acid mm -hmm. bubbles. So yeah. that doesn't make sense either. I, I speculate that they did dunk it in acid. They did. And then it was just like this yeah. smeary mess, and they're like, well, "That's not scary." Also, yeah. kind of like the lightsabers in A New Hope, it's unclear how the oh. deathbed works. Oh, so artistic. Because you acid probably wouldn't leave a lot of blood behind. His light of no, life it would not actually. It would, yeah, it would dissolve but it. But a lot of the people are bleeding yep. once they've been Good through point. deathbed. But not which no open wounds. They just got red paint thrown on them. I'm bed. glad you brought up A New Hope because that came out exactly the same year. Oh, my gosh. Um, and, it, and it's one of those things where, like, when you look back on these two movies, and like James was saying, there, there's this uh, diversion of oh, this film. Card. This film is very surreal, and it's, it doesn't make any sense. And it's kind of supposed to be creepy, but kind of not. You really don't get the, get a sense for it. Then you have Star Wars, which is a very, uh, I again, sort of surreal, but also kind of makes sense uh, as from an archetypal point of view. Mm -hmm. Whereas this has nothing internally consistent. Well, Star Wars was a transition from like the um, pulpy mm. sci-fi movies right. into big 
budget action. Yeah. This is a transition movie for the weird, suspenseful, art house, you know, Suspiria type movies into a more mainstream horror genre. It was, right? tri it was trying. But better had but been done already by 77. So you, Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Last House on the Left had already happened. Suspiria had already happened. Huh. So interesting. Uh, well, yeah, uh, but this guy is this is a one-time director. What was the budget? So he was yeah, in the right time, doing the right anything, thing things. at the right yeah, time. You're right. You're he right. just wasn't good. What was yeah. the What was the budget on? Do you know? Uh, I have no idea. Like Jock Brandis, we just saw the name Jock Brandis yeah. come up. They did special guy. effects. I think he was also in the movie. Oh, so yeah. that really? Tells you anything? How um, weird. Also, yeah, it's four by three cut off. Oh, well, that's I don't know. Well, that's this isn't the director's true vision. Writer, ah. writer and director. This movie was lost until 2003 when it came out on wow. DVD. So you got to give it some credit. Huh? That's really interesting. Uh, I think it's a very interesting movie. Hmm. Uh, I appreciate it for its kind of art house. I gotta tendencies. admit, I'm shocked about how tolerant you are about Deathbed. You, I mean, you there's no, there's, you've you torn gain, better movies apart. You don't gain anything by shitting on deathbed. So it has it's a, just gonna eat the shit. So you do it for sport? <laughs> Estimated budget, I don't know if this is adjusted for inflation or whatnot, but $30,000. That sounds oh, about yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it does make that sense. That sounds about right. Shot in two days, maybe? I think uh, uh, Star Wars I, was $10 million. I would just say one thing, uh, if you're planning on watching this movie, because most of these movies that we've been discussing are movies that we're saying you could watch for fun. That's why I picked them. Right. It wasn't just good, what like, came fun out this Halloween weekend movies, or, yeah. or whatever. I will say that one of the big things we touched on with Killer Clowns last week was that the movie may be dumb and stupid, but it never stops to sift in its own garbage too long. It's always moving on to the next cool sure. scene. It's like someone someone had a dry erase board. They figured out all the things that they could do in 90 minutes with Killer Clowns and made sure that each of those things together took up 90 minutes. This is like 85 minutes, right? This movie is... I think, yeah. What yeah, it's, it's like very short. An hour and 17 minutes or something. Yeah. Um, does not have that dry erase no, board it's worth bad. of effort. You're absolutely right. It's they, not a good it's, background movie. It's like distracting and weird. Like, so, Killer Clowns is great because it's high energy. It's good for like yeah, a party. This will have people like turning like, what the fuck? And then like people just be quiet trying to figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Which is not, not a good party vibe. So in terms of judging it as like a movie where we should, oh, should we all get together with our friends and yeah. watch Deathbed? No. Probably not. I, was, Probably I, I not. didn't really hold my interest, no, to no, be honest. Me. Well, it's 70. It's like very slow and plodding. It's yep. trying to debase you with bad pacing. I th and then a, like a bad director says, no, that's the point. It's supposed to make you feel awkward and weird and bored. And there's no. there's a certain classification of movies, gener especially from this era, where you're better off reading the wiki. Or <laughs> sure. like, like a, a BuzzFeed article that has a paragraph and then an image or a gif of what happens then. Uh, yeah. You get the whole thing. Uh, Elise and I have seen Solo. Mm. Or Solo, yeah. hundred and yeah, we kind of got Sodom. we kind of got uh, that's like Sodomed a, into the that's Solo. Like a we kind of unintentionally watched band it. Band film or whatever, it's supposed to be so edgy, and it does have crazy shit in it, like literally people eating poop nice. and violence yeah. and and horrific stuff. It's supposed to be a metaphor a, for Italian fascism, exactly. Nice. But there's but a lot of poop. I don't know how much poop they ate. Poop. It's so During boringly long. Long, It's so boringly long between scenes of people eating poop that it's not even worth yeah, watching. I, but you read the wiki and you're yeah, like, you're like get to the poop. Well, I was going to say, the, for Deathbed, if you wanted to for Halloween, if you really want to watch Deathbed, the bed put on the last 40 minutes or so. Because mm -hmm. the last 40 minutes, honestly, it starts, to get, it starts to get not so bad because you got, like, there's one shot where... It, you see the somebody like she gets dissolved a little bit. She escapes from the deathbed. You're like she's gonna make it, and then it's like a seven minute scene of her crawling out of yeah. the room. Oh, but then a sheet shoots out, grabs yeah. her, and grabs her leg and brings her back. Yeah, yeah. it's very long. She crawls for a very long time. Yeah, I think um, okay. some some movies are filmed in such a way that they are meant to like inspire discomfort or tension or make you feel really uncomfortable watching them by the way that they're filmed or the length mm -hmm. of something happening in it. Yeah. This, I don't think, was that kind of a calculated no. effort so mm -hmm. at is all. A, is like yes. definitely a classic. Yeah. The sound, the colors, the framing. It's all supposed to make you feel very unnerved and disquieted. Mm -hmm. This is just awkward. There's also a great scene where they, the guy gets only his hands dissolved, uh -huh. pulls them out, and they're just skeleton hands. Yeah. It's hilarious. And That's then the his best bones. I was dying. And, bad, and it still moves when his bones start popping off, and she eventually snaps off goes, one of his yeah. wrists. He's like, these are no good to me. <laughs> these better these take them. Just it's great, but it's better. really great. And then so, the very next scene, someone goes, because they're trying to kill the deathbed. They go, by the way, you need one of those bones. And goes, <laughs> I know. Um, real quick, because I want to talk about at least two more things. Yeah. Um, everyone, I want everyone to get a chance to kind of wrap up their thoughts on death better final bundle up bed. So no one blanket. at a time, feel free to give us your final opinions on death bed. If you have some, Oh, uh, I guess for me, 
The the only value I think in this movie is some I do enjoy and I know it's a personal pursuit trying to divine someone's deviancy when they make something. There are certain movies where somebody was so enamored with an idea that didn't exist, the only way they could see it real is if they made it. And I feel like this is one of those. Dude just really had a thing for like women in peril and beds that eats. So <laughs> and if you like both of those things. There was there was like two or three clever things. The hands was funny. The like chain being used on the girl's throat was kind of clever um but man there's just not a whole lot else to it watch the last 30 to 40 minutes that, that's my wrap up watch the last 30 40 minutes right. when the movie reached distribution the director claimed that he forgot that he had made it i don't blame him drugs <laughs> oh, yeah probably <laughs> could have been could have been psychedelic drugs is that your final that's my final, final appraisal thing. So. uh shout out to all the actors and actresses Jock. That return every single call that they get, <laughs> um, and and that somehow are totally on board with the, this. Always dumbfounds me, even with Avatars versus Aliens, that you could convince someone like, oh, we're gonna point this camera at you that Man, records everything forever. I would have been in deathbed. And then Shit, we yeah, want you to now we want you to get naked and pretend to be uh, uh, pretend to be eaten by a deathbed Perfect. slash Done. orgasming by a deathbed eating. Yeah. while I throw. Fake party foam on you and masturbate behind the camera. <laughs> I would have had that '70s bush. I would have brought it. Deathbed had a fun concept, um, but Deathbed that eats. no, yeah, it's not not so hot. Deathbed Bed that eats. ate itself. Who? Um, and so I want to move on to another thing. Yeah. Uh, we all just last night went and did something very spooky. We went and saw the woods. Yeah, that's true. The we did premiere, see the, woods. the Hollywood premiere. <laughs> In not Hollywood. Skip the ad. Uh, it's a trick. You can't. It's a trick. Um, and uh, it's the for those of you that don't know, The Woods is a short film made by the Sugar Pine Seven uh, boys and lady, and um, they they were really excited about this because this felt like this is something out of their wheelhouse. And we saw the premiere. So what, what did you guys? We don't have to necessarily say what you think, mm? but because uh, I don't want to give too much away. Oh, I don't okay. know how many no. people have seen it by this point. Um, you can watch it on Rooster Teeth first right now. It's coming to YouTube soon. But. I think to uh, manage expectations for anybody that knows Sugar Pine Seven, like if you if you know their YouTube channel, you know they do sort of uh, vloggy comedy stuff, like parody vlogs, which are very funny uh, almost all the time. And uh, this is sort of a serious thing that they do. It's sort of a serious short film, 22 minutes or so. That's horror, um, and there, it's not funny really at all. You're not like going into this thinking you're going to laugh. So. Uh, if, if you like Sugar Pine 7, you'll probably like their style and their aesthetic, but it's not exactly what you expect from their YouTube channel. So, uh, What's that? Yeah, those are my thoughts. Um, I guess... I, uh, it's, it's fascinating. I, I'm, I'm extremely happy and proud of, of them, because oh, yeah. they've already done more than I ever have with my stupid shitty life. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, without giving too much away, it's just, uh, if, if you maybe are interested in film, I think that is something you can watch and aspire to. Because there's, they've done a lot uh, with what they had and the time they had, and I think in the in the way that I tend, I make a hobby of reverse engineering films and how they were made and stuff like that. There's a lot of a lot of substance there if you're a, a burgeoning film lover or film creator. Uh, I'd say Sugar Pine Seven has definitely cultivated a very specific uh, aesthetic that's like personal to them. And if you are a fan of theirs, you will find that in spades in this movie um, and to the like umpteenth degree in terms of like the visuals. The writing, the performances, the uh, maybe not as much humor because Bruce, as Bruce mentioned, it's more of a serious take, but still in just the way that they are themselves. And also um, just like in the sound design and kind of the, uh, definitely the music. Yeah. Um, and yeah, especially if you're into like the visual aspect of filmmaking, you'll really appreciate it. And I, I thought it was a pretty incredible feat that they they did this film in the time that they did it, and I had a, a fun time watching it. I had a fun time watching them. It was, it, I, I would just say it's a really cool experience being there for, because they, we talked to them beforehand, and they were really nervous about doing this. Um, building off what Ali said, you kind of summarized it well for me too, but I think that if you watch Sugar Pine content, if you find it funny or not, you have to admire the fact that they know what looks good mm -hmm. and they know how to hold your attention, mm -hmm. I think. We make jokes about the Adderall and everything. Yeah. Like their content is fueled by Adderall um, combating ADD and those two things are managing. Uh, the Woods is very different 
from the stuff that they've made minus those two aspects. Right, absolutely. It's still visually, it looks. It's beautifully it shot. It looks great. Yeah, it's beautifully shot. And it never, it never stops for a minute to let you like want to check your watch or be like, how long has this been going? Or it's whatever. very well just, edited. Just is this 23 minutes? Well is this edited, 24 yeah. minutes? <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> we knew it was a short film, um, but it, oh, there was yeah. no point where I was like, where is this? Like, I feel like we, you know, how long have we been doing this or whatever? It, it keeps you, it keeps you going. And I think it's a really cool, it's a cool new, exciting frontier for them. I believe. I think it's a new exciting frontier for Rooster Teeth. I'd be curious if there's going to be and more of that. And for the future. world. Um, <laughs> Mr. Also, Churchill. The world. Uh, so I'm excited to see what everyone's reaction is to it. I'm especially excited to see what it means for them to do next. I and think I think they can, not to say that this didn't achieve their potential, but it didn't really achieve their potential. And I think, I think they can make something really, really, really cool with more time um, and, and, I'm excited. We're very happy for them and very yeah. proud. And very happy, Rooster very Teeth proud. Uh, I was, oh, yeah, I was surprised. Teeth I was surprised we didn't get that EP credit. Yeah, you know, or the casting. We did I, give Stephen a lot of buzz on our channel, and I've been giving him a lot of headshots. I actually gave him the idea for the woods. I don't know if you guys you know that. I said idea. you should make a horror film. You said, he's and that is a, that does qualify I mean, an executive that is producer. That's exactly what they did. Yeah, yeah. Executive and at I made least it. associate producer. I showed him my bush, and he didn't call me back. Not seven is enough. So should I be? Haven't they all been? But yeah, so if you get a chance, uh, check out The Woods on uh, on Rooster Teeth first. Yeah, I think um, it'll be up on YouTube uh, in, in a I want to say, days? Yeah, on like Halloween. Three or, four, three or four days. Yeah, yes, I think yeah. it's on Halloween, yes. Um, so yeah, congratulations to those guys, and thank you for making something that allowed us to perfectly tie it into this podcast anyway, <laughs> because Deathbed, as we were watching it, was going, how are we going to talk about this? We're going, I meant, I know, I know it. Um, I'd also like to thank not just Sugar Pine 7, but I'd like to thank Mac Weldon for sponsoring this episode of Filmhouse. You check in I'm screen. wearing my underwear. You guys, Mac Weldon's on. I know I have my <laughs> Mac Weldon's on. Um, it, it's we have different sponsors, but I think Mac Weldon is is one of the easiest ones to endorse. Uh, no questions asked because we are daily users of the product. Uh, Mac Weldon is better than whatever you are wearing right now. That's uh, their guarantee. Uh, Mac Weldon believes in smart design, premium fabrics, and simple shopping. Their website is probably one of the few websites that comes close to buying things like on Amazon. Ooh, you just click on wow. it, and then it's like like it's it seems weird, but you can go to different websites, and they're not always the shopping experience isn't always not that user great. friendly. They're not user they're not user unfriendly, but they're not necessarily user friendly it's either. Mac Weldon is very easy to use. Um, Mac Weldon will be the most comfortable. Underwear, socks, shirts, and undershirts, hoodies, and or sweatpants that you will ever wear. A lot of people think, we always talk about how we wear our underwear, but Mac Weldon has a lot of different kinds of clothing. They're expanding every single day. Uh, you have some of their shirts, don't you, Bruce? I actually There's really some, like their shirts. Uh, their yeah, shirts. I have one specific shirt that I'm, I'm in love with. I, I love their shorts. Everyone knows that. Um, as, as the weather starts to get a little colder here, it's 100 degrees. Here, <laughs> by the way. Um, as the weather starts to get a little bit colder, I'm starting to think about maybe uh, stockpiling some longer pants there or some long sleeve shirts or something from Mac Weldon so I can be comfortable. They have a, a line of silver underwear and shirts that are na naturally antimicrobial, which means they eliminate odor. So, uh, Lawrence, uh, your girlfriend is out of town for a little bit. That's true. Which means you probably won't be showering. No. Because why would you? Or changing clothes. <laughs> or changing clothes, but that's okay because if you're wearing the silver line of underwear... I don't have to. You don't have to. Nope. Smell like a rose. You well, don't have to. Everything... Everything, uh, just this little band right here. Yeah. It smells fantastic. Everything but else. that's the only place or, anyone smells you anyway. Exactly. Um, uh, Mac Weldon wants you to be comfortable, so if you don't like your first pair, you can keep it, and they will still refund you. No questions asked. Not only does Mac Weldon's underwear, socks, and shirts look good, they perform well, too. I always work out in Mac Weldon's. I think they were all in the wash, and I made the mistake of wearing something else to just, like, just, like, take Benson on a hike. Ooh. And I came back, and I was like, well, I made a horrible decision. So I had to drive home. She had to drive home. <laughs> I was in the back seat. What do weeping, I do? Weeping. <laughs> blood look coming at me. Don't thighs. smell me. Um, so if you're in the need for uh, some good underclothing, outer clothing, any clothing, go to MacWeldon.com and get 20% off your order using promo code FILMHOUSE. That's H-A-U-S. Thank you, Mac Weldon, for being a sponsor of this show, um, keeping the lights on so we can celebrate that our favorite little chicken boy. Um, and then I was going to say something else. But I Babysitter, what it was. probably? Oh, that's thank you. Thank you, Elise. Um, and then real quick before we get into Filmhouse Presents 
Best Buds Bud Watch. The Cinematic oh, this is Year 2017. Yeah, every we week. keep changing every, every single week. week. Uh, you, I don't think you guys have seen Bush it. Bushwatch. No. Nope. But since we're, trailer. we're just cramming everything into the final Halloween weekend. Pull up the trailer for the babysitter. I don't know. Pop it up. I'm going to show the trailer. Why? I think one of the best things about it is not knowing anything going I on. I watched the trailer really before I saw it. Okay. I, I, I haven't seen it yet. I, I saw the trailer. The trailer. Yeah. I've seen nothing. I think you, Let's as a fellow kid. river rat, what? I think you'd, you'd like it, Bruce. Oh. It, so the well, babysitter is a Netflix original film directed by Mick G. It's hot young people in a horror movie. And it's hot young people in a horror movie. It's a lot. It's very stylized. Yeah, when you first start watching it, I think stylized. you're gonna. You might be exhausted. Mm-hmm. I was a little bit exhausted. But if you are looking for something fun to watch this Halloween weekend or beyond, I think this is a fun one because it's a good throwback. It ain't winning any Academy Awards. No, it's not trying. It, but it ain't trying to. Like, just wants people to laugh. Yeah. There's a guy. There's a joke about a guy who takes off his shirt because he's jacked. I'm okay with that. You know? I'm Gosh, okay with that. the voice of a generation. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure which generation. The generation, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> as we know it. So uh, so our, <laughs> our Film House week, uh, week Award of the Week goes to uh, The Babysitter. Okay. Well, I thought it was going to be me. <laughs> I crossed my fingers. Sorry, we're gonna have to, we need Sorry. that trophy uh, back, actually. we gotta, uh, yeah. we got to take the yeah. plate um, off and put a new one on. And now uh, the part, without further ado, the part that everyone was waiting for uh, when, we're gonna toss to Bush Watch. We're gonna yeah that whatever that's called. We're gonna toss to Bush. John and Bones for Bush Watch. Bush Watch. And uh, and then we're gonna come back talk about what movie we're watching next week. Oh hi guys. Oh hello. Howdy. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Um, thanks for thanks for coming back on for I think what's fast becoming. Uh, everyone, mine especially, is favorite segment of Film House, yes. um, and it's aptly known as the. Fun House, Bud House, Best Buddies, Bud House, Bud Watch, Bud See You. Fuck. That's it? Right? Is that, part, part four. Is that part right, four. Bones? No, it's not right. I don't have energy to correct him anymore. Well, just to get every, catch him up to speed, our uh, Air Bud experts, Bones and John, are here. Special guest Benson, yeah. uh, who's coming in to consult, uh, are going through all of the Air Bud films. You're currently on number four. What's the name of that one? Seventh inning fetch. Seventh inning Get fetch. It? So that's yeah. baseball, um, and you're kind of keeping us abreast of the journey of this cinematic universe because it, it kind of is, right? Yeah, they're really uh, they're really starting to flesh out the world in this one. Um, really introducing a lot of characters from around the town, um, whether they're villains or, uh, in my case, with this hat I'm wearing to commemorate Sheriff Bob. He's actually a crossover from the MVP uh, timeline. Most valuable primate. Yeah, or, most valuable primate. Viewers. It's, a, Which is it's a, a monkey that plays sports. Do you know if any of the production people that are responsible for one are also responsible for the others? They're responsible for all of them. It's Keystone. This is the Keystone. Okay. I mean, they're to blame. Senior. But what about like writers or directors? Are there any... Do you move from one to the other? Is one... To use the terminology, is one considered minor league compared to the other major league? Do you want to like work on Most Valuable Primate so that way eventually you could direct your own Air Bud? Is that the goal? I think they they start out with with uh, Air Buddies when it's like the six little puppies that yeah. can talk and are psychic. Yeah. And then you because if you're gonna be working with a primate, I mean those things are a hassle. Right. Yeah, that's definitely They'll rip your face off. You need some major league experience to okay. work major, with a monkey. Major. Major League I experience. Get he, he gets it. I get okay. it. Okay, so, so the, what, let's the, yeah, let's tell us say, about Seventh Inning Fetch. Seventh Inning Fetch, this franchise just goes absolutely bananas. Uh, in the best way possible. Wouldn't it go possible. bananas in Most Valuable Primate? God damn it, James, you're right. Uh, but, okay, so this one, the, uh, you know, the, the movies... they has gone to the dogs? <laughs> <laughs> so it starts as a, you know, the franchise starts as a coming-of-age story of this young man, Josh Fram. By this movie, they introduce... These two kind of bumbling genetic scientists mm-hmm. that live in a trailer park that want to extract DNA from six dogs, Buddy and his children, to create a super soldier serum for for human athletes. Dog DNA into athletes to make them better players. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And uh, what I think is great is you. The, there they are right there. Those are the scientists. Okay. Um, they don't discuss it directly in the film, but I think for Airbud connoisseurs, ABCU connoisseurs, uh-huh. ABCU C's, uh-huh. um, we will know that those scientists, they have no credentials, actually. Okay. Uh, before this movie, at some point in the timeline, um, they shared a mutual mental breakdown 
and uh, and then believed they were scientists because in the last three movies, Airbud, Airbud Golden Retriever, Receiver, and uh, Airbud World Pup, they were the referees for the games. They were the volunteer referees for the park, the for the community, and then Airbud, I guess, just got into their brains and they cracked. And then they became the villains. Well, if you think about it, a referee is there to maintain order on the on the sports field or on the court, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so if there's a dog running around, then it's chaos. Then it's chaos, right? Yeah. So what's yeah. your point? It must have worn worn their. Is there is there any in film narrative given to explain that, or did they just not want to hire other actors? I think I think it's more that. Uh, yeah. uh, guys, are they to the, know, guys. Is it the same name? It's a little bit of John leaking into this. Do you know thing. if it's the same name? Uh, I don't know if they're ever named. Oh. They called him Professor. Was the okay. All right. So so there's. Scientists going around trying to steal genetic material right. from dogs. That yeah, and, super and the soldiers. scientists talk to a raccoon as though it's a real human. Yeah, and it listens. Which the I raccoon think, that we see in the trailer. Yeah, Rocky, yeah, Rocky Raccoon. He's a scoundrel. But then there's there's the there's the other the B story, the heartwarming tale of our old hero Josh's little sister trying to accept the fact that her brother's grown up. He's going uh -huh. off to college. Yeah. Like. Her friends better at baseball than she is. How old is she in this one now? How? how uh, I think she's just starting junior high, so she's like 12 or 13 okay, years old. Okay, so she's she's a yeah. tweener. All right, yeah. got it. And and spoiler alert, uh, the dog teaches her how to play baseball. That, I mean, that's not really a spoiler. That's a twist. I think that's and kind of the name of the film. No, it's a twist. Another spoiler. Uh huh. Um, Air Bud goes on to become a major league baseball yeah. player. MLB.com. He has a profile. I looked it up. Uh -huh. He wins the World Series for the Anaheim, An Anaheim Angels. The Anaheim Angels. Is there a crossover with Angels in the outfield? Do you know? Was there a yeah, it's possible. I, I mean, a lot of dog dogs died during the filming of this movie, so it's actually really possible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All dogs go to heaven crossed with oh my Angels God. in the outfield my, crossed with Airbus. My head is spinning. Okay, well, is there anything else we should know about this one? Um, uh, Sheriff Bob. Uh-huh. That's why I'm wearing this hat. Yeah, you keep mentioning that. He, That's the character's name. <laughs> he becomes a main player. He is in the rest of the movies, I'm pretty sure, until uh -huh. the actor dies. But, um, yeah, he becomes a main a main player. He's in every movie. Yeah. Okay. And this movie, farewell to uh, 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 poor man's Chris Pine, our hero Josh Fram. Uh-huh. Uh, this is it for him. He's off. He's That's off it? to the That's it. No more of him. Is anymore. that George R. R. Martin in there? Yeah, in there? absolutely yeah. it is. Yeah. That's, That's why right. he's not writing any more books. Oh, See, okay. yeah, I, in these. that was the thing in the in the other ones I was saying is Bob Hoskins. I need to apologize. It's not Bob Hoskins. It's, it's George, George R. R. Martin. George R. R. Martin. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it sounds pretty exhilarating. How far into the Airbud family? Because like eventually the movies become about puppies. Right, Air yeah. Buddies. Yeah, I think yeah. we got we got one more with with Buddy, and then we got five or six with puppies, uh -huh. and then three or four with primates. Uh -huh. And then there's a prequel to the Christmas special of the Air Buddies, uh, called Santa Paws, and then Santa Paws Two: A Search for Santa Paws. No, okay, okay, yeah. got it. So All next right. week we'll be back, part five, uh, Air Bud spikes back. Airbud yeah. spikes back, which must be volleyball. It is volleyball. Yes, Star Wars and volleyball. Star yes. Wars and volleyball, but it's not really a dog pun. No, no. spikes back. They ran out. Of, they ran out of dog pun. <laughs> spikes bark. Sparks. Spikes bark. Sparks bark. Sparks bark. Yes. Yeah. There. It's still. I mean, my personal opinion. It appears they're getting lazier. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> making these movies. I, yes. I, I don't no. know, guys. They're this getting is, more creative. This they're is where we they're kinda... breaking the bounds. Mm. Yeah. I think this is going to be interesting to watch you two go in different directions on the series as it goes on. You it's, know? Yeah, it's hurting our friendship watching these, actually. Okay. Well, thank you guys for coming on. No problem. Uh, if you could give uh, Seventh Inning Fetch um, a rating, what would you give it? Uh, I would give it uh, six frosted tips out of eight. Okay. John? Oh, you need mine as well? Yes, I mean, unless you agree. Um, I would give it eight... Okay. All right. Well, All right. there you have it. Um, thank you guys for joining us for this segment. No problem. And uh, we'll be back next week with Airbud Strikes Bark. Spikes, Spikes Bark. Spikes Bark. Spikes Bark. Spikes Bark. Part five, uh, part five of the Airbud Cinematic Universe, a.k.a. Oh. Funhouse presents Bud House. 
Colon. Best, best Buds Bud Watch. You got it. That's it? That's it. There we go. Got it. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, everybody. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, guys. Back to you, oh. James, in the studio. I got no idea. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Snowman. Thor. Oh. t -whor. Thor is coming out that Thursday night. Mr. Thor, you could have uh, saved her. It comes out that weekend. It could be Thor. It could be Thor. Rain it may not be, but I'm going to try and see Thor on Thursday night. Me too. How do you guys feel about everyone loving Tyke all of a sudden? Like, he was he was such an underground treasure, and now everyone's falling nah. It's really weird, considering he's made a lot of movies, and yeah. they've all been really good. They've yeah. all been really funny. But it was like, yeah. Yeah, another Halloween tip. Watch what we do in the shadows if, yes. we, uh, if you're Absolutely looking for some of this that. weekend. Oh, so mm. We should watch it this weekend. We should. Thor, I can't wait. Thor. Of the terrible malevolent force, mm -hmm. or its weakness. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And often the two are the same thing. In this case, it's just, yeah, the big red thing. Uh, I mean, but it's still cute. It's a... It, it, what I, what I, I think I appreciate about this movie is it at least understands the structure and format of a horror, mm -hmm. as opposed to other movies that are just all over the place and then they just kind of end. 